In this episode of Missionary Minds, we have a missions memoir written by Paul Schleilein on the 8th of May, 2014, and presented by Yamikani Katunga. Why the Old Testament doesn't rebuke polygamy. One of the arguments people use to minimize the sinfulness of modern-day polygamy, especially in Africa, is the apparent blind eye God has towards it in the Old Testament. John Reisinger writes, open quote, there is no instance in the Old Testament scripture that suggests, in any way, that polygamy was a sin. This does not prove that polygamy was not a sin, but it does prove that God never treated it as a sin. Close quote. John Beatty is even more direct, writing, open quote, Christians who uphold monogamy as the only acceptable form of marriage before God tell us that this is what the Bible teaches. They go on to tell us that polygamy is a sin. I have searched the Bible carefully and one of the staggering things concerning marriage is that the Bible does not treat marriage in terms of either monogamy or polygamy. Close quote. Whether or not scripture explicitly forbids polygamy is fodder for another day's war. The issue here is whether God's relative silence about the patriarch's polygamy implies tacit approval. I say no. Here are some sins in Genesis committed by righteous people. In Genesis 9, after disembarking the ark, Noah gets drunk, and there is no rebuke from God. In Genesis 12, Abraham, out of a fear of being murdered on account of his beautiful wife, lies to the Egyptians, telling them that Sarah is actually his sister. God doesn't rebuke Abraham. In fact, God punished Pharaoh for taking Abraham's wife. In Genesis 19, after righteous Lot escapes the fiery sulfur of Sodom and Gomorrah, an occasion which sees his wife turned to salt, he, like his aforementioned forefather Noah, gets drunk. Only that in this instance, Lot impregnates his daughters. For this, there is no rebuke. In chapter 20, as if Abraham did not learn from the events surrounding Pharaoh, he repeats the same sin and lies about Sarah not being his wife. And once again, Abraham wasn't rebuked, but Abimelech was. In chapter 5, the ever-opportunistic Jacob deceives his starving brother Esau, swindling him of his birthright for a meal of bread and lentil stew. Jacob is not rebuked. In chapter 26, it seems the apple hasn't fallen far from the tree, because Isaac, Abraham's son, lies to Abimelech, telling him that the beautiful Rebekah is his sister when in fact, she is his wife. Isaac does not receive a rebuke. Instead, he receives more blessings in chapter 12. In chapter 27, the tables have turned somewhat, and we see these deceptions worked within the walls of the home, as Rebekah and Jacob concoct a scheme to deceive Isaac and consolidate the earlier theft of the birthright by getting Isaac to give Esau's rightful blessing to Jacob. No rebuke, just more blessing is seen in chapter 23. Finally, in chapters 30 and 31, Jacob is working as a herdsman for his uncle Laban, an agreement entered into as a form of payment for the bride price of Laban's daughters, Rachel and Leah. Toward the end of the term, Jacob tricks Laban by manipulating his flocks of goats so that Jacob can increase his own estate, and in keeping with the common thread of this list of patriarchs with feet of clay, there is no rebuke from God. Assuming no one would use these stories to support drunkenness, incest, or dishonesty, why then polygamy? Surveying the other 38 books in the Old Testament would bring an endless list of examples. The point is that God's disapproval of polygamy in the Old Testament is clear. It shouts at us, but not in propositional form. Rather, the narrative paints for us the ugly picture of family squabbles, marital tension, painful neglect, discarded children, broken promises, and unquenched jealousy. After all, we aren't ever explicitly told that the prodigal son was wrong for squandering his wealth. Just look at the consequences. And that's it for this Friday's Missions Memoir, written by Paul Schleilein and presented by Yamikani Katunga. Until next time, keep pressing on. Heavenward and homeward.